and take a breath deeply into your heart center, exhaling slowly and softly and allow your awareness to come back into the room, back into your body because we would now like to present our wonderful speaker for the show and that is Dr. Eric Pearl and I want to tell you if you have not heard about Eric Pearl he ran a highly successful chiropractic practice for 12 years until one day his patients actually began reporting healings as Eric simply held his hands near them. Can you imagine? So Eric, are you there? Are you here with us? I am most definitely here, Monica. Oh, thank you great both to see for inviting you. me onto your program. Hi, Eric. <laughs> hey, Lee. I see you now too. Great. So Lee, you want to tell our audience a little more about Eric? I want to say with his life's partner, Jillian, they teach what science today calls reconnective healing. And I want you to remember that term. It's yeah. affecting the lives of millions globally, and it is, it really is. He has an ongoing worldwide work, and it's been now for decades. They recently created something called the Portal, which mm -hmm. is Reconnective Healing Online, level one. It's a course, so you may begin to learn reconnective healing while at home, and I know Eric's gonna talk a little more about that. Now, Eric, just like Lee, <laughs> has appeared at the United Nations. He's also appeared on Dr. Oz, CNN, and was featured in the New York Times. His international bestseller from Hay House is called The Reconnection. Heal others, heal yourself. And that's translated into 40 languages. <laughs> I mean, that's double what we have. That's right. 40 languages. Now, stay tuned because guess what, Lee? What? They have a new book that is coming out next year. Awesome. About time. <laughs> About, time. About, time. About time. Okay. Yeah, we had an interim book. We do. Okay. Okay. Well, that's right. That's true. Co authored with Fred Ponslav, and it's called Solomon Speaks on Reconnecting Your Life. And Solomon that's some Speaks. Interesting, that's some interesting um, channel material, something you're awesome. clearly an authority on that um, came through when I started holding my hands near my patients and they started losing consciousness. Well, I want to tell people because you're a personal friend, Eric, and unlike so many of the people that people are, 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 the viewers are going to see later on in this series, you are number one. And I selected this in our series for you to be first. Uh, I will just tell folks, and I want to make this short. My phone rang one day a couple decades ago and I was at home. And I got this man on the phone, and he introduced himself. didn't really get his name. And he said, look, people, I'm in Los Angeles. People are starting a channel on my chiropractic couch. I had this practice. I found your book, and I know you're a channeler. Can you help me explain it? The first thing I went is, how did this guy get my number? I mean, I'm at home. Nobody can do that. And the second thing is I said, if he can get my number, I'm paying attention. I did. I met him in Los Angeles, and that was the beginning. I'll tell you. Uh, this is honest, and I'm going to turn it to Eric, is this man, it's the closest in this work, and I've been around the world with him, it's the closest I've ever seen in any work in conferences to pick up your bed and walk. I've never encountered this kind of profound healing, this reconnection. Uh, I presented many times with him, and, uh, and Europeans, and they, uh, they love him, and so do we. Eric, take it away. Hi. <laughs> hey. Well, I do remember that phone call. I was a bit, more than a bit, um, in shock and not quite knowing where to go with it because you see what had happened to me was I had practiced chiropractic for 12 years and then all of a sudden, one night, a few strange things happened. A lamp next to my bed turned itself on and woke me up. I opened my eyes to find that my bedroom door, which I had closed when I went to sleep, was now open. I thought maybe someone <laughs> was in my house, so I got up and immediately located the largest knife I could get my hands on. I had an old <laughs> yes, right. empty can of pepper spray uh, that I figured would make me look intimidating, and I grabbed my Doberman Pinscher, who I thought would intimidate anyone in the house, and said she hid behind me. <laughs> hunting, couldn't find anyone, and after 20 minutes, I decided I might as well go back to sleep. It must be my imagination. So I got back into bed. I reached over to turn the lamp off. You know that little round knob or button that's on pretty much every mm -hmm. lamp um, in America? 
Um, and it was yeah. not clicked into place. It was rotated part way, and I knew that wasn't me because I'm a clicker and a locker and a shutter and everything's like sealed. So I thought, well, if they let me wake up in the morning, they do, but I'm closing my eyes and going to bed. All I know is that Monday I went into my office and my employees started asking me what happened over the weekend. I said, nothing, why? They said, you look so different, you sound so different. And I just you know, didn't give it that much attention. I went in to see my first patient and I adjusted my chiropractic patient, finished with them lying on the back, told them to rest their eyes for a minute or two. When he opened his eyes, he asked me who would come into the room. Well, his eyes were closed. I said, no one, why? He said, I heard someone, no one was there, I told him. He said, I felt him, I said, no one was there. He said, they were standing at the door. I said, really? No, they weren't. <laughs> so it said, okay, but you know, when someone's just placating you, they don't really believe you. I thought, well, something interesting must be going on with that person's morning. I ignored it. I went into the next patient. When she opened her eyes, she said, who came into the room while I was lying here? I said, no one, why? She said, the person at the door. No one was at the door. She said, I heard them. No. All I can tell you is, on this one day in my 12th year in practice as a chiropractor, although no one had said this to me before, seven different patients insisted. Someone came into the room, walked around them on the table, ran around them on the table, and two of them actually told me it felt as if someone was flying around the ceiling. Wow. So it would sort of be <laughs> difficult for me to ignore that, but simultaneously my attention was still pulled because other patients were telling me they could feel my hands on them when I wasn't touching them. I'm saying, oh, yes, sure, you can close your eyes. So they close their eyes, and I just stand there at a distance, and I hold my hands and angle them or move them or all sorts of things, and they could tell me, right shoulder, left ankle. So it sort of became a game because, well, it was my office. And I could have whatever games <laughs> I wanted, and it was sort of fun. So um, I played with that, and as I would pull and stretch my hands further away, I would start to see their muscles pull larger and twist with their eyebrows and their lips, and, and um, their eyes would flutter uncontrollably, and their fingers would move, and when they opened their eyes, they started telling me that they were seeing colors that they had simply never seen before. They were smelling flowers they hadn't smelled. They were seeing people in the room with them that although physically it didn't make sense that they could be there, they knew that they were there. They were not awake, they were not asleep, they were someplace more real with their words. Then people started getting up and walking who had come in in wheelchairs. I started getting calls from the patients of some of my children with cerebral palsy or epilepsy that suddenly they were able to walk again and run again and play and laugh and talk and not have seizures and not need their medications. Did it happen with every single patient of mine? No but it happened with a lot, a wow. huge lot of people. And we began to realize that something truly significant was going on. So I started getting phone calls from their doctors and other people saying, what did you do? And I, I said, I didn't do anything and don't tell anyone. Of course, the more I said that, <laughs> the more everyone me. started talking. And then people started asking me to teach this. And I said, you have got to be insane. How do you teach something like that? The truth is, I'm standing here, no idea what I'm doing. I'm waving my hands in the air, looking like an idiot. So <laughs> you go outside, wave your hands in the air, you let me know what your neighbors start to say about you. And um, yet, um, there was a, well, first then the researchers came, the scientists came, trying to study. They were taking measurements of things around my hands and around my body, and they're saying, we're seeing aspects of light and information, I didn't even know what they meant by information, that we've never seen before, we think, may well be here on this planet for the first time. I'm going, really? Uh, and <laughs> how, how can you say something like that? And they said, well, we can't prove it, but we, we haven't seen it. Television came, talk shows came, and people started really um, insisting that I teach it. So I went to an adult class at a place called the Learning Annex in Los Angeles. And um, they gathered 25 students. I brought in all sorts of crazy notes I made for myself to try to see if I could teach this and give them you know, what I considered teaching information. And I got there and I looked at them and I knew immediately those notes were gonna do nothing. So I opened up a massage table. I walked around the room first while they were in their chairs. I let them feel this in their hands. And their hands started to involuntarily move to and respond just like everyone else's. Um, and, and then I let them, show them sort of how to feel it. And I let them work with people on the massage tables and other people were having physical responses. And, 
as I put it, I guess I unleashed 25 new healers onto an unsuspecting planet and let, and I just <laughs> tell you that my phone started ringing so much that I had to buy my very first computer. As a matter of fact, what that reminds me of is that um, right now I've started, I, I only did three of them so far. Every Wednesday morning at um, about 8 a.m., if you can believe that hour. I'm not an early person, but that's when I'm doing it. 8 a.m. every Wednesday morning, um, Los Angeles time, Pacific time. I, I do a 30 minute, um, I guess it's, oh, an IG live. I couldn't think of the word. An IG live where I will talk for a minute or two. And then when everyone's on, we chat for a minute. We take a volunteer, someone we don't know. They click the volunteer and they come on from the screen. We play with this and their fingers go into involuntary movements and their eyes start to move and they can't control it. And then they share what their experience was and it's a whole lot of fun. So I'm planning on doing this every Wednesday morning from here forward, 8 a.m. LA time. So be there or be square. Well, interestingly enough, we're doing our Healing Wednesdays every single Wednesday at 6 p.m. at night. Los Angeles time. Los Angeles time. <laughs> So oh, you picked a great you booked a great day. That's yeah, and you're, fantastic. You're, you're, we you're can start with program. Eric and finish <laughs> yeah. with Cryon. I How know. brilliant is that? Awesome. So it was kind of interesting because I discovered that I was sort of right when I said you can't teach this. Now my perspective of it was a little limited. My perspective of it was some kind of a gift seemed to have awakened within me. I could find this, I could feel it, I could pull with it, and I thought, well, it's a gift, and you think of a gift as something being unique to a person, but what I found out was that reconnective healing is, as the researchers explained, this bandwidth of healing frequencies that includes everything we've had in the way of energy, all of the energy healing techniques, we're accessing parts of energy, and what reconnective healing does is it seems to release the little membranes, it was like there's a Reiki membrane, there's a Shigong membrane, there's a Jinshin membrane, and there's all the new techniques and the old techniques are different portions of energy serving sort of case in loving membranes. And reconnective healing seems to allow all the membranes to open and it reconnects all of healing, all the gifts of the techniques without even having to learn them. So what happens is Something happens when we interact with this, what science today calls the reconnective healing intelligence or the frequencies, and it awakens us or inspires us, catalyzes us, or we become a catalyst actually for this, and allows us to access this spectrum of healing so we can stop doing and instead become the healing. We can stop worrying about whether we're moving clockwise or counterclockwise or north or south or up or in or what to do first and what to do second and let go of the steps and let go of the fear and the protections because all you become is light and light has nothing to protect itself from because darkness doesn't exist. Darkness is only an absence of light and all of our fears that we protect ourselves from is merely us not allowing ourselves to shine as the light that we are. And once we grasp this, and that's really all it is, it's just a cognizant grasping of something that then moves beyond the thinking mind. Once I have, we get this, let me, we simply become the light that provides healings for those with whom we interact. Let me ask this just because I'm, I love sure. everything you've said. And I, it tweaks me when you say things that um, we've been teaching for years because I just love it. And one mm -hmm. of the things you said that the, the definition actually of, of uh, darkness is the absence of light um, and, and vice versa. And I, I love that because this has always been, it's just like um, what, what Krein has said, is, uh, light is active, dark is not. So, you know, it's about uh, if you have a dark room, you light a match and m many more people can see. This is the kind of, it's almost like, you're lighting a match mm -hmm. in some way that the body starts to see all the connections and starts to work it together. Do you believe that this is um, innate in everybody? Can every, can, is it there to be activated or it's a bad word? Is it there to be awakened? Here, here's where I, here's my understanding of this, okay? This is I can explain this. And, and I do want you to, I want to remind you, Lee, just in case <laughs> that, um, Yours was one of the very first books in this era I ever read, and, and one of the finest, your very first one. Um, 
your very first one, which was, um, it had that interesting, the end yeah, time. The end time. And, and I want you to know that after these healings started, someone brought me the end times. I said, I'm not going to read a book for that name, the end times. Who wants to hear about the end times? <laughs> and then someone else brought it. And I said, no way. And then someone else said, you have to read this and highlight it. So I started looking at it. Oh my God, what a phenomenal book. And, and it was like, you know, I took it with me when I gave a presentation in Hawaii. I read it. I highlighted it more on the beach. I came back and that's what I knew. I had to reach you, and um, of course, as you joke about, I'm, I'm one of you people who haven't read your books because I don't tend to read. I've listened to, to all of them on audio, but I read and highlight um, some of the ones when I'm really compelled, and your stories and your analogies just continue to enlighten the world, and I thank you so much for having her to bring Cry On forward. I, I don't really have words to thank you with, but I'm sure enough of you people will do that. You're, you're so kind. Uh, this I'm going to bring up something now, and it's um, it's something that shows people uh, you have a gift and you've learned how to, to, to mm -hmm. teach it. This is how I tell people, uh, and this is what you've explained too. I said I've I've seen people with gifts had no idea what they were and had no idea how to mm. to to put it into a course or anything else. This is what you've been doing for years and helped so many. There is an expression we use in this business called an ambush interview. And this is where somebody pretends to be wanting to interview you and show off and everything else, and you show up, and all they do is give you trouble. And I had one of those. Well, you've got one, and if you want, and we don't have a, um, you know, a, a whole lot of time, except that I want you to talk about this. Uh, they heard about you. It was a foreign country. I won't name it. And they said, we want to show up and uh, have you uh, tell us about it. And they showed up with a guy or a gal who had a withered hand from birth. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would you? I would you? So. And you wait, 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 wait. I don't remember the withered hand. I remember the one with she was 86 and had arthritis. That's that's it. But it was yes. something that she'd either had for a very long time. In other words, it wasn't something that you would normally be teaching somebody how to heal themselves. It was like it'd been there a long, long time. <laughs> Sounds and like they were ambushing you. They were ambushing yeah. you because there was no way they yeah. thought that this healer could ever, ever change that. So well, let, yeah. What happened? They were so nice. Well, here, I want to back up further yeah. into this. I, I do want to finish by saying I don't believe that this can be taught. What mm. this happens is it, it is communicated ah uh, yes uh -huh. in other words once you interact with it mm -hmm. it seems to ignite something it sort of awakens something that's dormant within i say this living walking generation mm -hmm. um of earth not generation x or mm -hmm. millennials but i mean this living breathing walking generation i believe we've been placed here with something dormant to receive and to be activated and once we interact with it it happens so you don't access reconnective healing from sitting in a corner and and oming any more than you sit in a high-rise hotel on a beach and sit in the corner and try to own the ocean in it's not coming in if it does you better run it's a tsunami you have to actually stick your spiritual little butt in your spiritual little bathing suit and march it down to the ocean mm -hmm. and it's the same with this you have to interact with it but i i know the story you're talking about i had been out. I was a bit younger and more into enjoying a little bit of partying now and then. You know, just a couple of drinks in another country with a whole bunch of friends. And I, it was my first day in eight weeks, and I was looking forward to sleeping in one morning. And the phone started to ring. And I answered, I picked up the phone, and it was this guy with a deep radio voice saying, Are you aware that the, or we won't say which country it is, it's a big that the such and such medical association has convened a formal meeting meeting about you and issued a national warning. <laughs> and, and I started to laugh. And he said, because I thought it was a joke, and he said, I fail to see the humor in it. Now, whenever, you, whenever anyone says I fail to see the humor in it, they're correct. They failed. <laughs> Thank you. He, he absolutely <laughs> failed to see the humor in it. Anyway, so he said it again. What's so funny? And I said, I really find it hard to believe that an entire country of this size, the Medical Association, would have a meeting and issue a warning about one American who's standing there waving his hands in the air. How very threatening. So I said, thank you. I'm going back to sleep. I thought I was. I hung the phone. I went to sleep for a moment. The phone started ringing again. The bell started ringing again. One of the people who brought me to the agencies there sent over three of their PR people, keeping everyone in the lobby. And suddenly, 
uh, three or four national TV shows were all there at once being <laughs> at bay. At bay. Mm -hmm. So one of them comes up, and they're very nice. And, and the guy's very nice and sets up and said, listen, we're going to bring this woman. You know, we're going to talk to you for a minute. So we, camera comes on, and he's really, you know, gentle and high, nasty. <laughs> camera comes off, and he's nice and friendly. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? So he said, like, listen, we're going to bring this woman on. You know, would you just let her see this in your hands and do a little healing? I said, sure. So in comes this very tall, sweet, 86-year-old, um, I believe, woman with a very kind of a proper accent. And um, <laughs> you can see the swelling in her knuckles, in her fingers. One hand she could close about three to five degrees, and the other maybe a full 12. She, and he said, so when we come back on it for this commercial break, we want you to heal her. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she must have been like this for 45 years. I don't know that I can do a healing right there in that second. And he said, well, okay, fine. So when we come back, I'll explain why you refuse to do the healing. That's right. Oh, yeah. shit, that's even worse. I've heard that. <laughs> so, I've heard well, that. Yeah. Yeah. so she sits down very properly and kind of excited by the concept and shows me her hand and I held my hand to and her fingers started to move and then the other one started to move and she goes, oh, I can move my fingers. Oh, look, I can close my hands. She was very excited. So anyway, that was nice, but the next show was coming, the next show was coming. So that night, as my hangover subsided, <laughs> <laughs> you can't be spiritual without spirits. I mean, really, tell the truth. So that <laughs> night, we had our staff there in like three Three of the different rooms that were close together, we had three different channels on because they were on three different main channels, all the shows at the same time. So we watched the first one, we watched the second one, watched the third one, and the healing's phenomenal, the interviews are phenomenal, the, the sweet, you know, 86-year-old woman was very good. And then all of a sudden, I hear someone go, Eric, back here, back here. I said, what do you mean, it's over? No, there, she's back. They had brought this woman to a big um, medical association representative. And he's interviewing her, so I watch. And she says, well, look, I can close my hand. I can move my fingers. And he said, well, that's not possible. She said, but look, I can close my hands. He said, that's not possible. And now this very kind woman who had this healing, you could see something had swelled up, welled up inside of her. And she's getting angry. She looks at him and she goes, I can button my own sweater, look! And she buttons it, and the guy loses all color. He pauses, and then he says, well, all I can say is, you were very lucky. <laughs> lucky? What was she gonna do? Her fingers were gonna turn purple and fall off? The worst thing that can happen with reconnective healing is nothing, and nothing never happens. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, the healing comes in the form you anticipate. But I always say, if you're truly fortunate, the healing will come in a form you have not even dreamed of one that this intelligence knows for us we have to stop directing and intending specificity of healing in this world we need to learn to let go of the personality ego and to sit back and say hey there is a greater a higher intelligence this intelligence knows where to go and what to do and we just need to get out of its way and give it license to do so and that is the main challenge to facilitating this clearly because our human personalities want to direct and control and when we do that we constrict when we let go we allow the perfect orchestration of call it god call it love call it the intelligence of the universe call it what you will to demonstrate itself to us and that in itself is a reward reconnective healing in itself mm -hmm. is its own reward and yet everyone benefits you know, Eric, I just love how the key things for me is that you said you can't teach this stuff, and the reason is because we have innate intelligence. Mm -hmm. And it's simply, I, yeah. I love that. And this is all in line with Cryon saying that we are now em being empowered to connect with the innate intelligence. And I love that you're able to teach people this getting out of the way, getting out of their own way to connect with something that wants to be connected to. Why do you think there is so much pushback when people see this and it works with the healers that are professional and on, on the earth? 
I mean, wouldn't you think that they would say, this is outstanding, uh, I've, I've dedicated my life and given an yeah. oath to healing people, but they just turn it off. I thought that healers would be the most open and mainstream medical would be the least. And it's really turned out to be quite different. A lot of the healing teachers confuse teaching nothing with teaching nothing. In other words, they equate <laughs> nothing with nothingness. Yeah. And um, a lot of times as students, we've invested our money to learn techniques and methods. And as teachers, we are invested because that's how a lot of teachers make their money by teaching techniques and methods. And um, really, it's time for us to become everyone, the teachers of the teachers. We're not here to stay at the same level. I know a lot of times people will you know, say, well, it's the same thing that Jesus did or this, that, and the other. And I'll say, but you know what, maybe. But Jesus said these things, and I'm paraphrasing very loosely, and Lee, you know the exact quote, and I don't. But essentially, um, these things that I do, you shall do and more. Mm -hmm. And first of all, people get upset with the concept of the same things, and they become really infuriated and more. And I'm saying, you can't pick and choose. If you're going to follow the teachings of Jesus, what makes you the person to decide which ones are right and which ones are wrong? We are here to grow and evolve. Healing people will say, I don't need a healing. There's nothing wrong with me. It's not about something being broken. Healing is not just about fixing something that wasn't working. That's a very limited perspective. Healing is about our human evolution. So everyone needs or is here for healing because we are all here to evolve. This is, this is part of even our teaching, even in this time of COVID. For example, you know, we learn to evolve, thank goodness that in the teaching, you know, as we teach around the world and, you know, the, you and I and now Monica too, we've ended up teaching and sharing the stage in multiple countries on uh, multiple continents. And um, now there comes COVID and now there comes um, physical distancing. Which that's, is the that's, the next, that's actually the last question I wanted to ask you oh, yeah. in this program is, uh, what is it you're doing that would uh, would help with it? Well, fortunately, um, about two years ago, we created a program called The Portal. Now, we had already been teaching in our live programs how to do reconnected healing distance sessions. So you don't need to be in the same room. You don't need to be in the same country. Um, Jillian and I facilitate distance sessions. People who go to the website and look us up to schedule them with us, we do those. But everyone that we taught in reconnective healing, if you go to the website and look at the directory, if someone who speaks your language, for example, can facilitate reconnective healing distance sessions. So you don't need to be in the same breathing room or anything else <laughs> with that. You don't need to be in the same country. But what we created is a program called the portal. The portal, the doorway, the opening. And what the portal does, we did this two years ago, is it's a phenomenal way of teaching. It's eight hours plus an additional extra two hours that we include with it. But it's not like eight hours of online. Me, my nature, just the way I do not really enjoy intense reading of books, my nature wouldn't sit there for um, you know a whole hour at a time or eight hours in a row. So the way we designed it is really quite intriguing. Um, Jillian and our main person, Anna, came up with this. We do six minutes of an exercise and five minutes of philosophy and seven minutes of science and eight minutes of something else. And then there's another exercise. And before you know it, first hour is over. You go into the second hour and there's seven more minutes of this and six more minutes of that, eight more minutes of that. So it's like a smorgasbord line you can keep returning to at your own pace. You only have five minutes that you want to sit down for or ten, then you do it. You don't need to block time out. So that's really phenomenal. As a matter of fact, on the website, um, there is, um, we offer the first hour of it for free, so you can take a look at it and see if it talks to you, see if it talks to you. Listen, this is about your inner knowingness, your truth, which is your instinct. It's not your intuition, because intuition is when we start thinking about our knowingness, we start to cloud <laughs> it with thinking. Instinct. Instinct. Your instinct. How does it call you? Do you want sessions. Do you want to learn the work? Do you want to learn it just for yourself? Do you want to learn it at a level where you can share it with your family or your community? All of this is really great and wonderful. And, and all of it's really available. Um, there is one 
just one <laughs> reconnected healing live training that's going on in the country and it will be i believe the first or second maybe the second weekend in october in new york by LaGuardia. it's taught by our main teacher but because as you both know yes, a lot of yes. events have been canceled so we were supposed yeah. to be teaching in montreal that was canceled so we're actually going to be able to show up there and be on the floor with those of you who are attending new york city and work with you on the floor and we'll do a little bit of the teaching with it meanwhile reconnective healing is being taught in different countries by people we have been working with and training for the past couple of years so fortunately in that arena we were prepared for covid and i shouldn't say we i should say the reconnective healing intelligence always knows what's coming and it prepared itself to find a way to be able to communicate and share with you. So whether you want to learn the work for yourself and for your family in the privacy of your own home, or whether you're thinking, I really want a healing session, not just because something's wrong with me, I don't need to have COVID or something, maybe I just want to be better and more. It helps emotionally, it throws you on to your life course in ways you haven't dreamed of. It brings about abundance, prosperity, clarity, emotionally, spiritually. It's like, it's like it, you know, I almost want it. It sounds like, you know, dump it into a glass, add water and stir, and it's everything. And it's kind of hard. You can hear from my excitement. I can't stop talking because I know <laughs> the short of the amount of time that we have. But it, it's like I, the most exciting thing about reconnective healing to me is that it opens up healing. What it's doing, is it reconnecting us? Yes. Is it reconnecting us to our original fullness? Yes. But it's reconnecting healing itself. It's taking away all the limitations and the steps and the procedures and the don't do this and the do do that and don't be afraid, go clockwise under the south of the equator and counterclockwise north of the It's taking away all of yeah. the imaginary protections that we've been doing and allowing ourselves to be. And what are we if we're not here to be and to be healing for everyone and everything to understand that I am you and you are me, but the truth is we're neither. We are simply existing in the field of awareness and consciousness that everyone is touching and no one is touching, everything is touching and nothing is touching. And I'm sure that for a lot of you who are watching this program right now, you're going, what am I feeling in my hand? What's vibrating in my body? And you know how I found that out? From that Hay House editor was the first person who said, I can't edit your book. I thought, oh my God, what did I do wrong? She said, every time I pick it up, it starts to vibrate and drops out of my hands. And wow. I, I, I did it. You did it. So you did it. Eric Pearl, that, I, you couldn't have explained it better in these last couple of minutes. And thank you for that summation. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful time. We will see you again. I know people are going to say, bring back Eric. He was fun and I yes. learned a lot. So just get ready because we're going to ask you again. So thank you, sir, so much for being here oh. with us. Yeah, and thank you. you. Welcome home. Thank you. It's great to be back. And you know what? We haven't seen each other for a couple of years now, but you are on fire. And I see just as much passion moving through you than I ever have. And I love what you said, that we're all just here with a greater force directing our lives. I love that. And you know what? And just wait, because um, I was told that you're going to be interviewing Jillian, and when you hear her, it'll be an entirely different way of explaining this to an awesome. audience, and you're going to love it. We okay. can't wait. We will. We will. Can't wait. Okay. What we're going to do now, folks, is, um, I know it's hard to get away from now, we're going to take the break of the show, and we'll be back with the Circle of Twelve. Thank you.